Hi guys, I'm so excited to announce our newest sponsor, Apero. Apero is a homegrown Dubai business that offers security spread, security boards, spreads, cups for everything, housewarmings, corporate events. I mean, I personally use them for all my girls' nights and every single time they are demolished. Huge crowd pleaser. You can get 10% off the first three orders on apparelboards.com. That is 10% off your first three orders at apparelboards.com. Enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back to Tell Me Everything with Land, episode 46. This is the episode you have all been waiting for. Woohoo! <laughs> Coco Duwaji Magzumi is in the house. Woohoo! Woo yes, you heard that right, guys. My mom is here to spill the tea. <laughs> I don't know what tea she has, but I'm sure she has some tea to spill. My mom and I have had a really interesting relationship, I would say. From enemies, for a bit, I was a difficult child, as you could imagine, um, who talk every single way, who go to Barry's together, and today, we're going to discuss marriage, because it's been like 33 years. So, from lessons to experiences to advice, please welcome my mama to the show. Welcome, Coco Dwaji Magzumi. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank, Thank you so much for being here, mom, and Thank taking the time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm honored to be on your podcast. Gosh, I didn't even know what a podcast was until like three years ago I when I started. I listen to your podcast too very often, so I was honored that you wanted me to be on it. I hope that I can add value to the... Well, to be honest, a lot of people want you on this podcast. Aww. I mean, yeah, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of Thank people you. have. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I love you guys. Thank you. So for starters, mom, um, can you tell the listeners where you grew up and how you ended up in Dubai? Because I mean, I know the story, but no one, not everyone knows. Okay. So, um, first of all, uh, I was born in the U.S., and my mother and father are from Syria and Lebanon, and I was born, raised, educated, worked all in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I came to Dubai for the first time in 1989. I have an aunt and uncle that live here, and I came to visit them because I had just broken up um, with my fiancé at that time, and I needed a break. And so mm -hmm. my aunt and uncle said, uh, why don't you come visit us for a while, you know, get away. So that was my first trip to Dubai was in 1989. Okay, so you came in 1989. Then how did you meet dad? Okay, so that's a little <laughs> bit of a long story. So I'm going to try and be brief. And so I met your father in... When I was 17 years old, so that was 1982, I met him. Okay. I had just graduated from high school. He had just graduated, I think, also from high school. He was going to university. I was going to university. And we met in the south of France. We met through family friends. Of course you did. We had like a little, <laughs> we had like a little summer romance. And each one of us went our own ways. So that's how I initially met your father. Mm -hmm. Then we reconnected back in Dubai in 1989 when I was here visiting my aunt and uncle. And he heard through some common friends, the same family friends from the south of France, that I was in Dubai on um, visiting. So he called me. Of course, at that time, there were no cell phones. So he called me um, on the landline at my aunt and uncle's. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't there. I was at my girlfriend, Maria, and she... So he asked for her number. He called me to my girlfriend's house. And honestly, when he called me, I was like, a mad who? I had completely <laughs> forgot about this human that I had dated in 1982. So anyways, so we reconnected back in Dubai, 1989. Okay, I mean, what do you mean you reconnected? Did you go on a date and you were yeah, like, yeah, oh. Yeah, we dated. No, no, we dated in 19... So we dated in 1989 and, and then... He was starting his career with his family business, mm -hmm. and I was doing some part-time work here, and then I had decided that I wanted to go back to the U.S. So we had to make a decision. So we dated while I was in Dubai, and then I went okay. back to the U.S., and he came and visited me on numerous occasions to the U.S., and so we had a long-distance relationship, and then we got engaged, and then the end of 1990, we got married. So it wasn't that long. So it was like a year? It was like a year, the whole thing. Reconnected, engaged, married. There Within you a go. year. Within a year. I mean, you don't hear of those stories anymore. No, you don't. You don't. I mean, no, you don't. Me and Khaled even getting engaged after a year was even, I think, a bit of a stretch. 
Uh, you just, you don't, I mean, we got, then we got, we dated for another year and a half and then we got married, but you just, you don't hear the stories anymore of, okay, we're going to get married, engaged, meet, reconnect after like 300 years and get married. Was it, I mean, okay, say, uh, second time meeting dad, was it love at first sight or like, were you like, oh yeah, this could be the one or like, yeah, no, this is the one or like, no, like. No, no, definitely there was a connection. Definitely there was a connection. There was a major connection, definitely. Yeah, but don't you think living, growing up in the States, more, I mean, I know you still have the cultural background of Syria, Lebanon, but you did grow up in, I mean, you were American in, you know, the way you spoke and you interact with people and your mentality. Was it more of like, oh no, we're going to date until we figure out if this is it. I'm already, I'm leaving back to the States anyways. Or, you know, because you hear a lot of stories, and I'm sure your friends have those stories of like, no, it's like we, you can, you have to get engaged to date. No, no, of course not. It's not like that with my family. Yeah. No, no, okay. No, no, yeah. No, so no, like, no. were you like, but were you yourself going to be like, we're going to date? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But the issue, it, the issue was, is that no, of course we were going to date, but it was a long distance relationship. He was living in Dubai, starting his career and I had gone back to the U S Yeah. so it was a long distance relationship. So if we did relationship, so if we did not decide to get engaged and move forward, then we would have broken up yeah. because we could not continue ones in Dallas and ones in Dubai. And WhatsApp did not exist then. No mobile phones, <laughs> no WhatsApp, uh, you know, yeah, so no. So yeah, it was a, like, a, it was a big chance for both of us. I mean, we took a big chance. Yeah, I mean, you and did. We, yeah, <laughs> we did. No, no, I mean, when well, we look God back you at did, it. because you have me. <laughs> yeah, no, when we look back at it, your dad and I, and we talk about it, and it was, I mean, it was a big chance that we took. We were, we didn't know each other so well. Of course, okay, the families met, we lied, they liked each other, a lot of commonalities, but still, you know, it was, yeah, it was a big chance. Do you think... Um, it is important for women in marriages to have their own space and independence because I know you have always raised me as a woman who has her own independence, her own space, I don't know what, and, you know, can make her own money and all of that stuff. But, I mean, back then, what, how old were you? When I got married? Yeah. Um, I was almost 27. 26, okay. 26 and a half, I think. 26, okay. Um, I mean, you're still new to the whole, like, long, I mean, I know you were engaged, but long form committed relationship. Did, was it instilled in you by your mother? It is healthy to have independence and your own space in marriage, or did you kind of have it figured it out on no, your own? It was definitely instilled by my mother. Definitely. Definitely instilled by my mom. She was, uh, my mom was a very independent woman. Also, she, Lana should have her on her on her podcast one day I will one, one million percent yeah yeah because she has a she has a an amazing story her journey through this life um how you know she went from Syria to the U.S. so um definitely my mother was a huge part of it and my father so they always told me that you know I have to have independence and my nature is I'm very independent I'm very um I need my own space from the beginning, and Lana knows until now, I do my girl trips, I do my, you know, I have my own time. I, yes, I'm very, very pro-independence for women from day one into the marriage. How did you create that independence or space? Was it through having your own job? Was it through, at the beginning, having a prep or having like an expectation of, I will be doing these things? Like I will be having my space. I will be having my independence. Or was it something that just wasn't, was understood? I mean, cause dad grew up in Lebanon. I know he went to USC and then McGill, but he did grow up in Lebanon. And I mean, not to stere uh, stereotype, but back then, especially now, even you have a lot of, you know, closed minded people. So did, was it an understand, a mutual understanding or did you have to verbally say it? Do you know, I don't think I was, I had to verbally say it. I think I just did it. And your dad is extremely Western in his mentality. Correct. Even though he grew up in Beirut, born, raised, Beiruti, Sunniat family, um, he is extremely Western. If he was not Western in his mentality, I would not have married him from the get go. So that, let's be very clear. So, um, he, so it was, we came back. So I got married in Dallas, end of 90. We got on the plane. We didn't even have a honeymoon, proper honeymoon. We had no money, so we had no honeymoon till later. Got on the plane, came to Dubai. Gulf War started. We had to go to London for a few weeks. Came back when things started to settle down a little bit more, and I got a job. So that for me, it wasn't that I even asked uh, Ahmad, can I get a job? Are you okay? 
I went out there, I started interviewing and I got a job. And that was the best thing I did when I came to this country mm -hmm. because I, I needed to have my independence. I needed to make friends. I needed well, to. Well, also it was like a desert. So like there it was, was a not desert. much, it was, there was no yeah, girls was, day brunches at yeah, Maine. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. It was, there wasn't even that much to do. I mean, you kind of had to get it also like to, to create, not just standing at home, you know, waiting, whatever for your husband to come from work. You also had to create that independence for yourself. Absolutely. It was the best thing I did for myself was getting a job when I first came to a few months after I came to this country. Um, kids, you've all been telling me to wait. How long after you got married did you have kids? Was there a discussion in the first year of marriage of we're going to wait, we're not going to wait? Or was it like, I mean, I've, of course the conversation, we discussed this on this podcast before with a lot of women is like having those conversations in like the first maybe six months of if your partner or the person that you're dating, I'm not saying the first date, but you know, as you continue to get serious relationship, the conversation of, do you want to ca have kids? You know, do you want to wait? How long do you want to wait? Are I think healthy conversations to have. Was that the case for you and dad? Because it was an accelerated engagement. We never had those conversations. It was, I don't, I think with us, it was kind of like a given. We were going to have oh, kids. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. We never really had a conversation. We're going to have kids. How many kids are we going to have before we got married? Mm. We kind of had that conversation later. And to be honest with you, I was like the boss of all of this, the children thing. So I decided. <laughs> as you should be, as you were the I woman exactly. carrying it. Exactly. So I decided, I was, so I got married at the age of 26, 26 and a half. I had you at the age of 29. So that's exactly what I wanted because when I met and I got, first got married. Remember, we had not been together for so long. So Correct. We, yeah, true, true. So we needed that time to be together alone with no kids, to have fun, to travel, to explore. And that's what we did. And that was the best thing that we could do for ourselves. So we did that for two and a half years, three years, and then I had you. So it worked out perfectly. So, so you're, are you thankful that you had that, those three years with dad, just the two of you before you had me? Definitely. So let's look, reverse it as someone who's in six months of marriage, as someone who's 33 years on the line, but someone six months of marriage. And for me, I'm, it's funny, the apples are far, far from the tree because I'm saying, yes, I mean, Khadid, you know, in two and a half years total, dated, engaged, got married. So now we're in July 10th. It'll be our three years of like knowing each other. I'm like, I will wait two and a half years, three years to have kids, but haha, <laughs> let's change the thing because you're telling me not to wait. So what is the difference? I'm telling you not. What's the difference? No, no, no. Coco? I'm, no, no. The it, difference is I was younger than you when I got married. That's the difference because. But you have egg freezing now. You have this. Okay, you have well, that. That's okay. I didn't have egg freezing and all that stuff, but just so you know, so I had you got pregnant with you with, and I've told you this with great don't, ease. Don't do this oh, though, because of that. Yeah, sorry. With great ease. Yeah, go ahead. I had, uh, I got pregnant with you within maybe six, seven months of trying. Fine. When we wanted to try and have another child, it took me two and a half years to get pregnant with Ramzi. So that I didn't account for. I thought I was going to get pregnant. And th that's why there's almost a five year, diff four and a half year difference between the two of you. That's not how I wanted it, but that's how it happened. So you're so, saying because of your body and how it like, you know, adapts and whatever you're saying, don't wait because of the risk of it. But don't you feel like with the advancements of technology, no, the I disagree. <laughs> why? <laughs> I completely disagree uh, because, you know, I know too many people that have had so many issues of trying to get pregnant and they couldn't get pregnant. They did IVFs. They did this. They did that. I know there's a lot of technology out there. I just, for me, I just feel for you, you should not wait too long to start trying. You don't know if you're going to get pregnant one month or you're going to take two years to get pregnant. That's a fair point. So that's a fair point. Um, so looking back on your first year of marriage, if you can remember, that was like 33 years ago. What would be your, like everyone says that first year of marriage is the hardest. Why do you think that's the case? Well, in my case, it was the most difficult because we were trying to still like get to know each other and adjust <laughs> to each other. And, you know, we're living together and, you know, what he likes, maybe I don't like what I like, he doesn't like. So for me, the first year of marriage was extremely difficult because I had more obstacles um, on my plate than maybe a normal couple. Um, so 
L listen, everything was difficult. It was hard. It was very, very hard. Then it got better. Then it definitely but got better. What were the things that, cause like I will say what, what's been going through. I mean, now I'm at literally the six month mark. It's March, it's June. So I can tell you what I'm finding hard, but I'm curious to know what specifically were the hard things. I know you guys hadn't accelerated everything, marriage in a year of whatever, all the things. And then now you're moving to a new country which didn't have a lot 33 years ago. I mean, mashallah, the Dubai has today is unbelievable to what it was 33 years ago or even more since, I mean, you came back. But what would, besides that of like the country not being advanced yet, what would you say were the hardest things? Like who's going to cook and clean? Because that's the no, <laughs> that, no, that wasn't hard. The cooking, the cleaning wasn't hard. I just think it was our habits. You know what I mean? I think it was like what time we got up in the morning. Oh, interesting. Uh, what time, you know what I mean? What time like we wanted to go to the gym because we would go to the gym usually together because we, I lived 33 years ago. I lived at the Hilton apartments next to the trade center. That was my... <laughs> That's where my cousins lived, Yad and Hazar too. So we lived in the same complex with them until we moved to an apartment. So it was, it was really like just small things that we were trying to figure out, you know, what he likes, what I like, what, you know, it was, yeah, it was. Like what you take to do on the weekends, like even basics like that? No, I mean, no, it wasn't, um, it wasn't really like what to do on the weekends. I mean, I have to say one obstacle that I do remember now is that how, because I had a lot of family at this at that time here so mm -hmm. I had aunt uncle cousins that were all here a man didn't have so much family here I think his one brother was here but he didn't have as much family as I did so I we tended to spend a lot more time with my family like on the weekends going here going there and so we had to find a happy medium with that because mm. he wasn't so keen on all of that yeah, you know, once yeah. in a while it was okay but not as often as we were doing it mm -hmm. early on. How did he communicate that with you? He told me right out. <laughs> There's no like being, you know, polite about it. He just told me right out. He's like, we're not doing that anymore, okay? You're going to have to like do it like we do it every once, every two months we do a, you know, family Once every get two months? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, once every two weeks. Oh, okay, fine. Sorry, sorry. Because I will say one of the things that's funny that you're saying that because even 33 years ago to now of like the difference even in marriage is like one of the things I'm struggling with and I'll name them right now in the last six months has been time management. And what I mean by that is how many, how, cause like, right. It's once a week with his family, once a week with you guys working out. I mean, we don't work out together. So that, I mean, that's not an extra we do together, but working out podcast, my daytime job, which is not my podcast. Um, friends, all my different friend groups. So what I'm finding difficult, and I think what we're both finding difficult is like, what I'm finding difficult is time management. It's like, how do you, you have seven days a week, but I lived at home, it was a lot different, right? Because I lived with you guys. So seeing you guys every single night for dinner was just a given, because I was going to see you guys every single night for dinner. We're going to have dinner as a family. Even if like I'm eating later than you guys or vice versa, you would still sit with me at the dinner table while I ate. So we already had that family time going for us on a week, day to day, not even week to week basis. Same with friends. I like to go out a lot more than Khala does. This is, I mean, if you're my, in my friend group, it's not a shocker, but, but for, for me, I like to go out more just in general. And I think my friends mostly like to also are like also in that phase but like for example his friends aren't in that phase his friends friends are more married and have kids and have two kids and have three kids and I don't know what so his friends are so my friends are in so also balancing that so I would say in six months of marriage I'm finding difficulties in time management and how to manage also time with him because I think, and maybe you would agree with, I mean, I know I asked actually Coco the other day, what do you guys do as date nights? And she was like, what, like, what are you on about? What do you mean date nights? I was like, yeah, like when do you do date nights? She was like, we don't because we're with each other 24 seven. But see with Khaled, see, I would think like that, like, you know, every night is date nights. We're cooking together every single night together. But for him, date night is taking me out to dinner or going to the beach, spending the whole day at the beach together or even if it is like doing a walk around Barsha together. So I wanted to ask at 33 years into marriage, do you have, are those things in question? Cause like, for example, your parents live in the States and they come here, but so that's family time is already stretched out because you don't even see them a lot. But I would say now, is it like, no, I will make sure that I'm seeing my girlfriends 
this day, this day, this day. So I make sure I'm with your dad all the other days. Okay. That's your question. <laughs> I, I, can you repeat the question? I, I'm a, I'm a Do little you confused. find your same, you're saying just time management back then was an issue in terms of you spent a lot of time in your family, then you had to adjust. Today, 33 years, do you find yourself still time managing your time? No. How? You I, work out six days a week, crazy, by I the know, way, psycho, I, but no. you have book club, you have this, you go see your friends for lunch, and also you have to consider dad. Do you find yourself struggling to time manage? Uh, no, absolutely Okay, then not. how? Why? No, how? Well, because, but first of all, I don't work anymore. Okay, so fair that's enough. A big, that's a big thing. That I don't is a big thing. Because I, I, yes. And okay. most young people these days have to work yes. due to the cost of living in this country. Yes. I don't work anymore. So I stopped working um, when the Ramsey was, I think, 16 or 17 years old. So I stopped yeah. working. I decided I'm retiring. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done with work. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I worked all my life I worked, university I did part-time. You know, I worked all my life. She worked at Express, guys. I worked at Express. <laughs> I worked at yogurt shops. I worked at the pool as a lifeguard. I mean, I worked all in that. Because that's America. Yeah, that's yeah, That's what people yeah. do in America. I worked when I came to this country. I worked when I finished college. So anyway, fast forward. I, um, now it's my time. So I have time. I spend a lot of time with my family when I'm in the U.S. It's, I concentrate on my mom, my dad, my sister, my son, my cousins, everybody. I, it's concentration with my family. When I'm here, yes, my husband is uh, very important and I do spend a lot of time with him and I spend time with my girlfriends and I spend time on my own because I How? need my time. Explain, okay, what would a typical Coco week look like? Dad's not traveling, he's here, for, like he's here, he's working here. Okay. A typical work, let's just say like, a day. Like a day. Okay, wow. Are you not going to go? <laughs> let's say a day in my life. So a day in my life would be a man and I wake up very early in the morning. Yeah, they, they're criminal. They wake yeah. up at 5 a.m. Wake up at 5.30. Criminal. No, no, no. We used to be 6.30. Now it's 5.30. I don't know why, but we do. We wake up 5.30 in the morning. We get our coffees. We go upstairs. Now the weather's a little hot, so we're sitting upstairs having our coffee inside. We used to sit on the terrace, have mm. our coffee, do a little morning catch-up and everything, and then... I go to the gym, I go to berries or boxing or your Pilates or whatever, and your father works out at home. Then he has to work. So either he <laughs> goes to the office or he works from home. If he, Let's say he works from home that day. So that morning I'll finish from the gym, whatever, if I need to do some errands, supermarket, this, that, fine. And then your dad and I usually will, have, if I'm not out seeing a friend or something, we'll have lunch together. So we'll have like a late lunch together. So for me, this is all quality time I'm spending with my husband. And after lunch, I'll be either reading or I'll be doing something in the house, scrapbooking. Or napping. Know, or <laughs> napping. No, no, I don't Yeah, I have to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, in the morning yeah. napping. Sometimes we'll be out in the evening. Sometimes we, mo the majority of the time we are home. We're not people that go out every night. So we go out, you know, once, and once, you know, whatever, once or twice so a week. So you see this as quality time together. You don't need to like physically leave the house as no, quality time. I do not need to go on a date night. But I think that's also after 33 years of marriage. Yeah. I think maybe in the first six months because, you know, and I'm out of the house all day and then at night we cook together, then I sleep and then I sleep very early compared to Khaled because I wake up and go to the gym at like before I go to work. So I think that's where maybe the difference is. What about having your independence and personal space when you had kids? Forget when we were older. I'm talking like under 10. Yeah, so I so I didn't work when um, when uh, when I had you. I stopped working um, for many years. I stopped and when I had the Ramsey, I wasn't working either. I had like a little side business. I used to import jewelry. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Silver jewelry from uh, Mexico. So I had a side business that I just did from the house. That was just for fun. Um, so it, it 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 was hard. And your father at that time was traveling um, extensively. Yeah. So I, I was I was the the one that was raising your brother and yourself. So I spent a lot, I felt like I did the best that I could do and give m both of you a lot, a lot of quality time. I was very involved with school activities. I used to be assistant coach of like kickball or you know all kinds of stuff yeah. that we did at the American school. So I was yeah. very, very involved. And so I feel at maybe those years when you and your brother were young, I didn't maybe have a lot of independence, you know, because I just didn't have the time, even though we have help here, but I didn't, I was a hands-on mother. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my nannies, the maids or whatever, raising my children. 
My children are my children. They helped me with babysitting and this, but I raised my kids. So with personal space, is it kind of like, I mean, for me, I'm definitely dropping off the kids and going to the beach with my friends, but I'm saying <laughs> you mean like personal space and friend time and all of that just comes second after you have kids for those formative years. Yeah, and then remember though, we do a lot of, we did a lot of things as families. Like okay, yeah, lot. that's true, that's true a actually. Lot. Yeah, we I didn't think about that. We had the best years. We were at the beach club, the Jumeirah, the Hilton Beach Club. That, Jumeirah Beach Club, that was our second home. You guys grew up there. All our friends were there. Yeah. Lindsay and Manuela so I guess and you didn't need Hazard. like. But I guess was, you didn't need the one-on-one -on -one no. friend, whatever, luncheon as no. much because Not at that time. you had those Fridays. Yes. Back then it was Fridays. Fridays, Saturdays. The kids would be at soccer playing soccer. We're sitting on the sideline watching the kids. We're chit-chatting, catching yeah. up, having our coffee. So, yeah. so you integrated it in that way. Yes. Hi guys, support for Tell Me Everything with Lance is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in grooming. Manscaped uses precision engineered tools to help all your shaving needs. And I'm here to give you 20% off. Use code LANZ, L-A-N-Z, for worldwide, free worldwide shipping, plus 20% off at manscaped.com. Enjoy. Um, I want to swi uh, switch gears a bit here. They say when you marry someone, you marry their family. And that is 100% true as, I mean, I've seen in the next, right, where you guys were doing like six months to 33 years, but in six months, I can see like time, man. I mean, I know not a lot of dad's family lives here and neither does yours. So maybe this difference could be, in, it, it would be a bit different in terms of like physical time spent, but it is when you marry someone's family, you marry, I mean, when you marry someone, you marry them. How have you, I guess... Like, have, first of all, let's say, is this true? Absolutely. What would be your advice on this? Like, do you think that there, are, there should be boundaries in place, you know, from day one of marriage? For, for me, for example, let's say, like, it's one day at my house, one day, or one day at your house, one day at his house. That's how we're putting the boundaries in place. You know, forget the one-offs where I go and hang out with you guys, just us two, or forget the one-offs where Khaled goes to his parents to hang out. But, you know, that's where, like, the boundaries are put in place in terms of turn management. What would be your advice? Would it be in a week making sure that you're 50-50 splitting it? Would it be during, you know, because I know you keep in touch a lot with like dad's sister, for example, and dad's ne nephew and nieces and stuff, and you make sure to see them. Is it like you're, you put in the effort to make sure that you are seeing them? What would be advice for newlyweds or almost newlyweds on that subject? I, I have to say that I, it is very important to know the family of your partner prior to marriage and yeah. know them well. Know the mother, the father, especially the mother and the father and the siblings because they are going to be a part of your life, whether you like it or not, whether they live next to you or they live in another country. They are going to be a part of your life and they are your husband's family. Mm -hmm. So in my case, because my husband's family lived in Lebanon, so we, but when, so we, I didn't have the same, the same situation as Dynamic, you do. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have that. But when they came to Dubai, my parents or Ahmad's parents, it was like, like we were with them like 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. It was intense. We were with them because they are his parents. Just like he, you know, he spends a lot of time with my parents when they're here. So it was just like we, it was a given for us. That's what we were going to do. We were, when our, we, our parents were with us, we spent a, a large amount of time with them. That's just the way we did it. So it was just a given. So my advice is make sure you know them and make sure you like them, your future in-laws. It is extremely important. And you will see your partner will have a lot of similarities like their father's as they get older. This is something yeah. that I've noticed yeah. from my husband. I see a lot of similarities in Ahmad that I used to see in Allah Amo Mustafa. A lot of similarities. So I, yeah. Well, I see a lot of similarities in you and Teta. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Especially as you get older, yeah. I definitely see a lot of similarities. I mean, I mean, besides looking like you, I mean, with the hair, I think I'll call my dad, but with the hair and the personality, I am very much a carbon copy of you, even I'm only 29 years old. So I do see that that is to be true as people get older. What would be 
something you wish you knew before getting married? Oh, it's a hard question. I know. Let's say first year of marriage, like you would have learned, like that you had learned maybe later down the law line or even in year one of marriage would be like for me, one thing would be (laughs) time management. (laughs) No one told me it's as hard, but also I don't have a lot of friends my age that are married. The only ones are Sadea and Sadea did tell me. (laughs) (laughs) She did let me, she let me know about like that. You're going to struggle with time management. You're going to struggle with this and that and this and because both of her like her in-laws and her parents both live here. Yeah. So she can relate to me a lot on that, that like you're going to struggle with time management. It's just part of what it is. You're going to struggle with it. But, and she's like, your priorities will change. Yeah. And I have seen that already in the last six months, whether I like mm-hmm. it or not, that I'm not going out to nice guy, dancing my little butt off that. Yes, your priorities do change because of, for example, Khaled, say we've gone out like two weeks in a row. Khaled's like, I don't want to go out this weekend. I'm like, how dare you? But like, yeah. also he is my husband. So yeah. like I have to also, and we already know this about Khaled, yeah, yeah, yeah. in with Mykonos every summer. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. He doesn't want to go every single yeah. summer like it's it is for me to go every single, it's compromise. It's very so important. do you think that's one of the things that you wish that you knew before marriage? Compromise? No, no, no. I mean, it's, I don't know what I wish I knew before I got married. I, it's marriage is um, it's difficult. You're gonna go through. You know, it's not the first year, the second year, the third year. It's. I mean, we've been. I and I've been together for 33 years. If I told you that 33 years were bliss, I'd be lying to you. <laughs> it's not like that. That's not life. You know, there are ups and downs, good times, bad times, amazing times, sad times. So uh, there's not really anything I would say the fir- like for me time management was not an issue. I didn't live in the Dubai that you live in. I didn't That's have true. the million That's friends. True. I came to a country, I had my some family and I had some good friends like Manuela and Ramzi, my cousins Iyad and Hazar. I didn't have a thousand friends. Dubai wasn't ha- happening like it is now. Yeah. It's a different place. So I didn't struggle with this time management at all. <laughs> Why are that you saying not, it like that? It is a thing. Time yeah, management yeah, yeah. is I a did, thing. That was not a thing for me. No, it was not. My, it, I think the hardest thing for me was adjusting to living in Dubai. In 1990, yeah. that was in 90, 90, end of 90, we came beginning of 91. That was extremely difficult for me. Extremely. Adjusting to Dubai. I mean, yeah, extremely. America to Dubai, that is it was quite a huge, difficult. Even though I had visited here, I had been there for, been here for a while, but it was different. This time I was married, living in a small apartment, <laughs> one bedroom, you know, it was different. So it, that was very difficult for me. Um, did you, because I mean, I don't, I would, would you disagree to say that the statement that in your first year of whatever, your engagement, your whatever, whatever, dating, marriage, all that year, did you got, you and dad have a fight? Like, did you ever have a fight? I know you can't really think 33 years ago, but try and think. I mean, I'm sure we had fights. Okay, but what I mean is, is because I find fighting pre-marriage to marriage are very do different things because I think there's more like, you're married, you've done the whole wedding. I mean, I think most of me and Khaled's fights came from the wedding. So let's talk like now it's like real shit, you know? And you're, this is, it is real shit. Let's say it is real shit. When you're married, it is real shit. So did you kind of had to find a mode of communication when you were fighting? Like, was there like a mode of like, and your first fight that you can think of, was it like, oh, okay, I didn't realize this. Or because they say, when you make up and you fight in a marriage, like there are ways that you make up and the ways that you fight in a marriage, like the ways that you fight are like, and then that's the way that like, okay, you know that this person, for example, this person gets really loud. Like they scream. This person doesn't think before I'm speaking. For me, it's, I don't think before I speak. Whenever I'm fighting in the moment, I definitely don't think before I speak. How early did you realize, okay, this is what happens when I get mad. This is what happens when my husband gets mad. And have you worked towards trying to fix that i'm still working on it i knew you were gonna answer I'm still that. working that's on that's why him. i started laughing I'm still but, working on it we're not there yet i'm still working on so it. so do you think this isn't this isn't a thing that you figure out once no. and that's it no it, it, it do you think it's a continual process it is a continual process as you age you also change okay you become more mild tempered you become Things that used to irritate you when you were 30 years old, you don't really care about anymore. You know That's I mean? interesting. Yeah, okay. you don't really care about anymore. It's like, I'm like, whatever, you know. But there are, th- what if it happened to me when I was 30, or say when we just got married or something, I'd probably be 
you know, extremely upset. Now I'm like, whatever, you know, you just don't, you don't, you have to let things go and you have to let things go and you can't nitpick on everything. You just don't. And you learn that as you go through the years of marriage and you go through the different stages in marriage. Mm -hmm. What do you, okay. Now looking back, what are you happy about? Like looking back on year one of marriage, super difficult, whatever, you know, mm. different, you were in a, in a different country coming from the States. Now looking back and what, like year one to year 33, what are you happiest about that? You don't have to deal with that shit that I'm going through year one of marriage. What am I happiest about? Is um, it like the comfort of each other? Is it like now that you're older, you enjoy just, you know, like as you know what I mean? You know like what? we are, I, I tell you where we are in our life right now. So we are in our, that's where I am in my life. And I have to year say 33. This. Yeah. So the year 33, um, we're blessed. We're very comfortable. We're able to enjoy life. We are able to travel extensively. We are able to do a lot, you know, that mm -hmm. we couldn't do in year one. So I think now we just are trying to enjoy every moment that we have, whatever we do, wherever we go, whoever we are with. That's just how, that's just where we are in our lives. Did that answer your question? No, it did answer my <laughs> question. So I have a lot to look forward to because now me and Khan got to hustle. Listen, it's, everybody hustles. Everybody has to hustle. It's all a part of it. So everybody hustles. So it just enjoy the ride and always, always be respectful to each other, love each other, communicate with each other. You know, these are very important. Trust each other. These are very important things in a marriage. One thing I was just, I was going to end our podcast episode with what would be your number one advice to newlyweds? But was that your advice? Trust each other, love each other. Or what would but, actually be your number one advice yeah. looking at someone who's yeah. six months you know in? What? Yeah. Keep the line of communication open at all times, even though it may not go the way you want it to go, but it's okay. Keep that, you know, keep talking about it. Keep try and not let the little things get to you because honestly, in the big picture, they mean nothing. So you've got your health, you've got each other, you're building your lives together. Enjoy the ride. All right, mom. Well, thank you, Coco Duaji Magzumi, for coming on. Tell me everything with Lance. Guys, don't forget, follow, subscribe, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.